Okay, I shall do my slideshow. Sorry about that. Um, you've already know that. I looked at the equity framework in the Coeur d'Alene School District. There's been a few news articles about it. I wrote up my opinion on it. Um, my concern with it is, is the spokesman, Scott Mabin, for the Coeur d'Alene School District said there's nothing in it related to critical race theory. And I was told that your task force or your commission has a copy of that framework. So on page eight, there is a reference to a critical race study. It's under the topic of why education equity matters. And if you look below at my screen about halfway down it, I reference it's discrete disability studies and critical race theory in education. And then also on page six of the equity framework, there's a quote from Zaretta Hammond. She is a known critical race theorist you know, uh, I would call it proselytizer for lack of a better word. And she has numerous references in the reference section. So it concerns me that their equity framework isn't just about better teaching. Then if you look down and it's kind of small on your screen, it's the bottom left corner has the picture of the shoes. And it says equality is giving everyone a shoe. Equity is giving everyone a shoe that fits. And another person, I have two other people that didn't want to be named that helped me with this presentation, but she pointed out that our current vice president made a video during her campaign with similar wording to this. And she was called out by our support for putting out a communist video. And that concerns me. Um, under the section, and I didn't write down the page number, but equi equality versus equity, if you look at the top one, Equality refers to equally sharing and division, maintaining everything at the same level. Do we really want education to be the same for everyone at the same level? Because we're all born with different gifts and different abilities to excel at different subjects. So that in itself concerns me. And then equity at the top, it says equity refers to fairness, justice, and impartiality. And while they think that's a great goal, who gets to decide that? Does the framework decide that? Does the individual teachers decide that? I could not figure that out. I also emailed the school district and got no response. Um, my next concern was where it says universal design for learning. Because if you read through the equity framework, it starts talking about students' individual ability, but then it talks about this universal design for learning. There are known different learning types. And my concern is, as I wrote on this slide, where you lower the bar so all can be equal, you're never challenging students to excel beyond their peers. Let's see. Ah, this next part, this MTTS, it's equity based. We have to have everything be equal. And I think when you get to the social and emotional learning, this is where personal beliefs become really hard to avoid. And I agree with previous speakers who I being having as public school teacher myself in a different state, you want to stay as neutral as you can and let the kids figure out and talk with their parents and their family and their peers and figure out what they want to do. And my concern with this happens with the Coeur d'Alene school district. You may have all be familiar with, there was an incident in the Coeur d'Alene school district where a school counselor believe that gender dysmorphia was normal and it was encouraging the 10 year old girl and hiding this from the parents and the parents had to withdraw the girl from school. And in my opinion, school personnel do not just automatically get to do what they want, especially with the social and emotional well-being of a child without involving the parent. And in this case, the parent was not abusive or neglected, which is where you could make some different decisions. Another one that really concerned me is discipline. They want to have this new prepare, respond, restore. And I asked these questions for, from the school district. How does that work when, a, when you come to physical harm or bullying? In my experience, subbing and teaching, there are times, and it should be less frequent than perhaps people would like, but there are times when zero tolerance and suspensions are appropriate. While we'd love to make every student care and want to learn, you can't. You can try your best. 
And then it occurred to me, isn't this a type of punishment for all the other kids in the class that you're going to leave the kids in class that don't want to be there and are probably disruptive? So those were my concerns with the critical race theory. And if this is okay, I'd like to present some in, I would call inconsistencies and biases. This is the Magruder's American government textbook for post false. And I'm pretty sure it's the standard junior book in high school for most of Idaho. And the school district was very nice, communicated with me. Let me borrow this book for a couple months to read through it. So pardon if some of these screenshots are blurry, they're pictures from my phone. So the first, my first concern was democracy versus republic. This textbook goes back and forth. Um, where that arrow is on the screen, it says in a democracy, supreme authority rests with the people. Might want to think about that one. And in both of these, on the left slide, it says many Americans use the term democracy, republic, representative democracy, and Republican form of government interchangeably. And they are not the same. But then this textbook is going to go on to clearly try to confuse you about it, in my opinion. On the right slide, it talks about ancient Greece and Rome being democracies. One was not, and we'll get to that picture. De now we have direct and indirect democracies with no mention of a republic. And my other concern is there's very little mention of the Constitution, which outlines a lot of our types of government. Um, let's see. On this one, if you look over where it says roots of democracy, pardon my picture, my fingers in the picture on the right, you go from democracy to Roman Republic to feudalism to sovereignty to democracy. America is not a democracy. We have some democracy based things that we do. We are democratic in some ways, but I feel that to be very inaccurate in a textbook. And then a couple pages later, if you look, green part, United States, they just said we were democracy, but now it's constitution-based federal republic. So inconsistencies there. Then they go on to describe on this page, it says the foundations of democracy. The American concept of democracy, what we believe democracy means rest on these basic notions. I'm not gonna read through all of them. Pretty sure you guys have all my slides. But my concern is they're saying our rights are based on democracy. Our rights are based on the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, and that should be mentioned in that book. It goes on for multiple pages. The democratic concept of equality means that every person is entitled to equal opportunity and equality before the law. If you read the whole paragraph, which I will not, it's talking about democracy again. No mention of our founding documents. Um, individual freedom is based on, you know, democracy again. It's based on our founding documents. And little sidestep here, a little bit of an opinion and not fact. And I would like our textbooks to be more neutral. They talk about the UN. The purpose of the UN can be summed up this way, to make the world a better place. That is an opinion there are valid points for that side and the other bow should be put in there or that part should not be in the book. In my opinion, um, under rules of members of Congress, I thought it was really cute that they labeled agents of constituents instead of lobbyists. I think you should be more plain and name it what it is. Um, another point of concern is these two pictures are examples. They're all throughout the book. My concern is why are we promoting one news channel over another? My favorite news channel is not in there, but I don't think any of them should be. To me, it's a very subtle way of saying, get your news from them. No, I think a textbook should just stay out of promoting any media outlet. Um, you're gonna hear a little more, bias regarding civil rights and religious freedom, same textbook. White settlers bring discrimination. Um, there's stories for both sides. I wish they had gone into more detail about that before expressing an opinion. Um, U.S. Patriot Act, another opinion. I think there needs to be more balance or both sides. Free speech zones. My concern is it says, you know, these 
Under some circumstances, it is reasonable for governments to limit the place and time of political speech by creating so-called free speech zones. There's still ongoing cases before this court regarding this. I know you can't always keep the textbooks really up to date, but there should be more balance in that. The other picture is a picture of a, some person with Occupy Seattle. I don't mind that being in there, but there needs to be more context and there needs to be both sides on that. Civil rights versus civil liberties. I do actually agree with that. The book was not all bad. I'm just pointing out the highlights of what I don't agree with. Um, I think in light of this last election, some of this next part is a little entertaining, depending on your point of view. It says the mass media plays a major role in the U.S. political system, but their influence is limited. Oh, that's so cute. Um, they talk about voter ID laws, and they say so-called voter ID laws. How is that neutral? And there's not much on the other side. I think that should be left out or both sides of that put in. Voting by religion and race in 2016. This one's a mixed one for me. I think it's a good breakdown so you can see where their support is, but it's also emphasizing our differences. This should be rethought for being in this textbook. And it's also based on a New York Times exit poll and polls they're not always accurate. So that's an area for concern. More about the mass media. It says that the mass media is entirely privately owned and operated. The primary goal is not that of influencing the course of public affairs, but they do. And that should be stated in there. Not very neutral. Um, this is about the political parties. Where do the parties stand? I don't like any of the descriptions of this. I don't think it adequately describes the Democratic Party. Granted, it's from 2012, so it's a little older. And the Republican platform. I And there's one little graphic about it. I think there should be board done into it. And there's no mention of third parties. We are not a two-party system, even though those two dominate. Um, flaws in the Electoral College. I'm not going to read over all that. They go on and on about the flaws. One, two, I think there's three, four pages. And then they go over, oh, there's a little paragraph on what we think is okay with it. I don't find that very balanced. I think that should be more balanced. It shows the bias and what certain opinions are pushing. And I know that's hard in American government book but I think we can do a lot better. All right, Summer, are you yeah. getting close to the end? Yeah, I think that's my last slide. I'm just checking. Yep, that's my last slide. Perfect timing. Thank you, Summer. Committee, any questions for Summer? All right, no questions, Summer. Thank you so much for Zooming in. All right, com Committee, we are just a, just a little bit behind schedule. Let's, um, oh, Summer, did you, are you still there? Um, we have a, Isaac has I'm a question still, for you. Go ahead, Isaac. If you have that textbook with you, or if you remember, did it mention anything about natural rights? I do not remember off the top of my head. I do not think it did, but I'm only, I would say about 70% sure on that. I don't have the textbook with me. The school district let me borrow it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank